Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of fibroid uterus with Nabothean cyst. A 50 years old female patient came with low abdominal pain and heaviness. She was sent to us for a transvaginal ultrasound. Let's see what we have got on transabdominal ultrasound first. Here's the longitudinal section of the uterus. You can see multiple hypoechoic areas within the myometrium. One is indenting towards the perimetrium, indicating a subserous fibroid. There are a few more within the antiomyometrium. So primarily this is a case of fibroid uterus. Here's a transabdominal ultrasound picture. The uterus looks bulky. We'll measure it later. And this is the subserous fibroid. This hyperechogenic line is the pseudocapsule. If you have seen my previous fibroid uterus case videos, then you know that this pseudocapsule is a very important point if you want to detect a fibroid. These are the transverse and longitudinal sections, and you can see these fibroids at the antiomyometrium. Now let's go for the transvaginal ultrasound findings in this patient. Here's the longitudinal section of the uterus. The uterus looks slightly bulky. If you look carefully, there is something within the cervix of this patient. And this part of antimyometrium doesn't look homogeneous. So we will evaluate it further. Here's the approximate measurement and the uterus looks bulky. Now let's look at the cervix. You can see a tiny anechoic well-defined area at the posterior cervical myometrium. This structure is the Nabothean cyst. This is a very common finding when you are doing the transvaginal ultrasound. Here is the measurement of this Nabothean cyst. Now let's go for the fibroid. Here is the transverse section of the uterus. You can see multiple heterogeneously hypoechoic areas at the antimyometrium. These are well defined and one is indenting towards the perimetrium making it slightly irregular at that point indicating the subserous variety and others are found confined within the myometrium. No one is indenting towards the endometrium. So these fibers are of subserous and intramural variety. These fibers are heterogeneous. Make sure this patient is of 50 years old. So expect some degenerative changes within these fibroids at this age. Here's the measurement and you can see these fibroids here. Another intramural one. You can see this hyperechoic margin here. This hyperechoic line is the pseudocapsule. Another picture of the fibroids and you can see this hyperechoic thin line is the pseudocapsule. Here's also you can see the pseudocapsule. and the picture with the transverse section of the uterus and you can see these are the fibroids. Here's another parasagittal section of the uterus and you can see the fibroids at the anterolateral myometrium. Now let's magnify one fibroid to evaluate these findings more. You can see this is the intramural one and it looks heterogeneous. These are the hypoechoic areas and these are the hyperechoic parts. There might be presence of calcifications which we can't appreciate here. You can see this hyperechoic thin line is the pseudocapsule. It is not found all over the margin. Rather, you can find it here and there. A common differential diagnosis adenomyosis will come with this heterogeneous appearance of the myometrium. Presence of this pseudocapsule will help you differentiate between the adenomyosis and the fibroid. Make sure you look for this pseudocapsule. Here we have put the color Doppler. You know I can't resist myself putting color Doppler over a lesion. So you can see predominantly peripheral flow towards the fibroid as it is a benign lesion. Now we want to take sample from these supplying vessels. So we have chosen one artery and you can see it is showing moderate resistant flow. We have measured the resistive index and it was around 0.8. 
Now, if you checked my previous case videos with Doppler finding of the fibroid uterus, then you know that fibroids usually get moderate resistant flow like 0.5 to 0.6 resistive index, but here you can see it is getting 0.8 resistive index. Now, what to predict from this report? There may be different thoughts regarding this one, but make sure again that this patient is of 50 years old, that is she is in perimenopausal state and as these fibers are getting degenerative changes, so the peripheral resistance is getting increased. So the vessels are giving you a change from moderate resistant to high resistant flow. So possibly these fibers won't get enlarged in size, rather they will get atrophied in future. So in summary, a bulk uterus is noted. There are multiple well-defined oval heterogeneously hypoechoic subserous and intramural fibers within the entomyometrium of the uterine body. Color Doppler shows high impedance flow in supplying vessels, indicating multiple subserous and intramural degenerative fibroids. A tiny well-defined oval anechoic cervical nebuthian cyst is also noted. Now the take-home message. I have already told you that fiber should have an ecogenic thin pseudocapsule which helps differentiate between adenomyces and fibroid, though they may present simultaneously. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about our next posts. I'm usually trying to post videos on Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. Also, you can check our Facebook page for getting updated. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.